the idea is that we start shifting up the paradigm from overconsuming and having an addiction on synthetic, plastic, and materials that are polluting but also could be dangerous for humans and nature for natural based materials. Hello, this is the Weekly Tradecast, a podcast brought to you by UNCTAD, the UN's trade and development body. I'm Sarah Toms. We're exploring how major events are shaping trade and development and how that affects billions of people around the world. This week, we're talking about replacing plastic with natural materials and why we need more and better cooperation to create benefits for economies and the environment. In 2021, the global trade in plastics was around 369 million tonnes. That's enough to fill 18 million trucks, creating a traffic jam encircling the earth 13 times. Less than 10% of all plastic produce has been recycled. The rest ends up in landfills and oceans, taking years and decades to break down. But many natural materials like bamboo, sand and algae could be used to make eco-friendly versions of the straws, bags, bottles and wrappers we use and discard every day. Beyond helping the planet, the shift to plastic substitutes offers economic opportunities, especially for developing countries. Well, to find out more about the sustainable options, I'm joined by UNCTAD's David Vivas, Chief of Section at UNCTAD's Trade and Environment Branch. Well, welcome back to the show, David. Good morning, Sarah. It's a real pleasure to be here. What are these plastic substitutes then and where do they come from and how do they work? Plastic substitutes is a relatively new concept devised by UNCTAD just one year ago. And what are plastic substitutes? Are a group of natural materials from mineral, plant, animal, marine, forest origin that have similar properties than plastics or can have similar functions that what plastic does today. Now, what are not plastic substitutes? They are not fossil fuel based materials. They are not synthetic. They are essentially natural. They have a lower life cycle impact than any industrial synthetic or chemical product. They produce less waste, sometimes even zero waste and are easier to absorb by nature because they tend to be biodegradable, compostable, recyclable, or erodible. So they can be absorbed easier by nature or by waste systems, particularly in developing countries with these systems are relatively weak. Now, plastic substitutes are not hazardous for human health, for plant or animal life. So the idea is that we start shifting up the paradigm from over-consuming and having an addiction on synthetic plastic and materials that are polluting but also could be dangerous for humans and nature for natural-based materials that can be available to all by using existing biomass. Right. So with uh, production, transport and all these other things considered, you say these substitutes are better, but how much better are they really than plastic? Are they just less bad? When we're talking about plastic substitutes, we're talking about materials such as natural fibers. We're talking about glass that exists since, uh, you know, the, the early Roman times. We're talking about aluminium. We're talking about materials coming from agricultural waste, such as bagasse. We're talking about bamboo. We're talking about different materials that are available today. We're talking about pottery. We're talking about ceramics, many products that we have at hand. And uh, some of them are very old. Some of them are very new and innovative and have been improved through design. Now, in production terms, they have much better performance in life cycle than any synthetic chemical product. Second, in waste management, they tend to be easier to absorb, easier to recycle, or even are exhausted at consumption. Now, when we're talking about transport, I think the impact of transport in emissions particularly is the same for all imports and exports. It mainly depends on the mean of transport. Again, electric train is the lowest, of course, no emissions. But you have road, air, and maritime of the three. Maritime transport is the less emitting per weight and volume than any other. So it's the less, the less emitting sector. So that should be the preference uh, in terms of exporting. Now, global trade in plastic substitutes is already around, I think, $400 billion a year. 
But what are the extra economic and environmental benefits that UNCTAD is talking about? Now, the importance for development, environment and social aspects is that all these new plastic substitutes can generate sunrise industries, industries that don't exist today and can create new green jobs, particularly of women, that can generate income in countries where biomass is available, particularly in developing countries. And there are many cases uh, of all uh, plastic substitutes. The most interesting ones are those coming from agricultural waste because they are fully circular. Example, bagasse that you have in many small island development states and you can build with that, you can produce with bagasse from biofuels to furniture to paper to n number of products coming from bagasse, which is just thrown away. Which regions could then benefit quickly from developing these substitute plastics and what do they need to do? I think all countries, all regions can benefit. All countries have a certain production of biomass, yeah. you know, and yeah. certain production of agricultural waste. Biomass is very abundant in developing countries. And I'm going to give an example that I think is almost the perfect example. The cultivation of seaweed to do membranes. You can produce screens of membranes with seaweed that will allow you to drink the water without any waste. So they act as a filter? Yes, they isolate the water from bacteria and you can just drink it and, and, and have it. And now the interesting part is that seaweed, to produce seaweed, you don't need land. You don't need fresh water. You don't need fertilizers. And create jobs mainly by women. So there is almost zero impact on the environment. Even seaweed can absorb carbon. Well, that's a good point, David. I mean, why aren't we doing this more then? How can companies and countries be persuaded to boost production of, of these innovative ideas? First, they are very recent, but I think we need to start first persuading consumers of the importance of shifting their habits. To shift from, again, the synthetic polluting products to the more natural ones and also change the way they consume using circular economy principles, more reuse more recycling, but also more substitution from the best possible available option in the market. That will drive businesses. On the business side, we have corporate social responsibility. So companies can themselves start reducing the amount of plastics, chemicals, and toxic products mm. they use in their production line incrementally. So the products they have are not only better for the environment, are also healthier mm. for people. And finally, governments can seize the opportunity to build in new value chains that are labor intensive in a world that we are looking with artificial intelligence to less jobs. So let's also promote sectors that are environmentally friendly, socially friendly, and at the same time can create incomes for the poor. The estimates we have is that basically by substituting plasticos for natural based materials, we can reduce plastic pollution between 17 to 20 percent, so one-fifth of the problem. We'll have to have other actions, so we need a comprehensive agenda. First, you need to phase out the production of toxics, hazardous, or problematic plastics, and their additives, because sometimes the additives are worse than the plastic itself. Second, we need to phase out any type of fossil fuel subsidy, and any subsidy to the polymer complex. We need to produce less. Thirdly, we need to phase out any tariff and non-tariff measures at border for substitutes. Natural products today face higher tariff, more non-tariff measures than all the chemicals and industrial products. This is a totally inconsistent in global trade policy. And nobody realized until very recently we have, when we have brought the evidence. So basically, plastics tend to have tariffs between 5 to 10% and substitutes from 10 to 25 So you are punishing the natural yeah. and not the artificial, mm -hmm. So, which is a totally inconsistent policy with the environment. We can make a trade policy that is more sustainable. And finally, we need to improve circularity. We need to expand recycling, waste management systems, particularly in developing countries. So we need to really do a complete shift in the policies we have and the objectives we have. And I think countries need to get excited about a new agenda for addressing plastic pollution, but enabling substitution, circularity and waste management. OK, well, thank you for that update. That was UNCTAD's David Vivas, who was this week's guest. Tune in to the weekly Tradecast next week and every week for more insights on the most pressing issues around the world of trade and development. And there's even more on our website, unctad.org. I'm Sarah Toms in Geneva. 
Goodbye for now.